Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Road to the Knockouts Team 2 has brought a lot of content and a lot of craziness to FC25, and EA Sports have brought a new way to crash the market. We saw it a couple days ago on Wednesday when they crashed the market because of a store pack, and they started to do it even again yesterday on FC25, and there's more packs in the code that literally mean EA could crash the market with the press of a button and that's something that we have to talk about today because it's a little bit worrisome for the market especially when you don't know when those packs are going to be coming it seems like ea's new trend recently and i'm not a huge fan of it but we're going to discuss that today and of course what could be happening today on saturday with leaked spcs maybe another player of the month and another road to the knockouts player spc and of course lots of market movements to watch out for i have no coins right now i'm hoping for some people to play foot champs today maybe pushing some prices up and maybe the opportunity to make some coins so if you're excited for this one drop a thumbs up on it and of course subscribe if you are new let's go over yesterday's content of course there was a lot yesterday we'll try to get through it as fast as we can going to objectives first where we had the replacement for Odomendi, who was our objective last week we have santiago jimenez this week from feyenoord it is a simple evolution sorry objective to get done it is two sets of 500 sp assist three goals and score at least two goals per match in four separate matches you can do this in squad battles pretty easily um, or rivals if you want to two players from the air divisi you could also combo this objective with the milestones for air divisi that's something that i would definitely do if you're going to do it in squad battles it's little things like that to make yourself a little more efficient in this game that can help out a ton now that was objective content not a lot evolutions guys the hype in evolutions is not for the evo that we got yesterday because we have hot off the news information Hot off the press information, got to get the word straight, that EA has fixed the issue with Evolution. So maybe we can get some real Evos now. Because this one yesterday, La Roja, felt like it was just a filler Evo. It didn't have any of the maximum rating boost or requirements here in the rewards. It felt like this is a Evo just to put something out while there's maybe something going on. EA is trying to fix whatever is going on behind the scenes. But it sounds like... They fixed it because just a few hours ago, they posted this. The first FC25 server release notes have been posted, primarily addressing an issue with the evolution attribute upgrades. I kind of forgot or maybe even didn't remember that there's server releases. We have pitch notes and we have server releases. And I think the server releases can be added instantaneously. Maybe I'm wrong by that. I don't think it says in here when it's going to be released. So Hopefully that means it's already added to the game. But these are the notes that they posted. Address the following issues. Addressed instances of evolution player item attribute upgrades not matching their previewed numbers, aka the power surge evolution not giving out the full upgrade that it was supposed to. This is awesome. This means they're going to be fixing the whole issue with this Evo and whatever it was that was causing players to not be fully upgraded, aka the Joe Gomez that a lot of people were seeing as an 82 instead of an 84, or the Munoz that we looked at in a video a couple days ago as an example for one of my friends who had not gotten the fully evoed card, that situation looks to be resolved. But, of course, for you who have already completed the evolution, you're like, Nate, is my Joe Gomez or my card going to get to upgrade? This is a promising sentence. This issue will be addressed for previously impacted players in the coming days. Of course, it's got the trademark in the coming days, which we see all the time on these EA tweets and stuff. But... That's a good sign. Honestly, that tells me that they're going to just give you the stats. Hopefully, I mean, it doesn't really say that, but that's, I think, the only way. How do you? How else do you compensate this? Do you give them another Evo to complete for those who had already completed it? Hopefully not. Hopefully, it, I mean, that wouldn't be a bad thing, I guess. But if you did the Joe Gomez Evo or whoever you did in terms of power surge and then chaining that into another one, like specifically the club member reward that a lot of people are doing, the right back Evo... Hopefully this means that you'll just get your card boosted, it'll be upgraded, and that'll be the end of it. But I think what this means is we're going to have to be waiting for an EA Direct tweet. Because again, if they're going to address it, they're probably going to address it through that channel. They'll be watching for that. But that's nice, and that hopefully opens up the opportunity to get some real evolutions. Maybe starting today on Saturday, we could get those really good evolution pieces of content that we feel like we've been missing for the past week 
on this game. They also mentioned something about the average market price UI not displaying as intended. I think that's because it shows NA all the time. Maybe that's fixed now. And then squad updates were occurring every time you entered Ultimate Team. So, um, not to just skip over this La Roja evolution, but it just felt like kind of filler content, to be honest. Like, there's only five players from my club that fit this. There are some gems if you want to take a look. Um, uh, Morales, I think his name is. He's in the League 2. Villarreal, since they got um, relegated. He looks cracked if you combo him up. So there's like one or two pretty good evos with that La Roja one, but not as many as some of the other good evos that we've seen in the past. But hopefully it means brighter days for that section of content, which we all would love to see. Let's talk SBCs from yesterday. Of course, starting with the one hour before content drop, we had player of the month, Lamine Yamal. He was dropped early as expected yesterday, guys. And this is a nice SBC. Both of the SBC players yesterday, Lamine Yamal and Nico Williams, the price is a bit of the issue, and some of the upgrade on the cards a bit of an issue as well. But I think this is the better of the two, and I want to explain why. Four-star, three-star, so no upgrades there for him. No changes in position, just a solid upgrade over his inform card. Yes, he has some stats that are glaring issues. 70 composure, 52 strength, 48 aggression. That's a bit low. The three-star weak foot, that's a bit low as well. He's got good play styles, though, just like his gold and his inform. And he does have nice rolls, too. He's got four different roll pluses, which makes him a little more versatile in terms of the FCIQ tactics. This is a decent card. And really, what I think this card obviously gives you is a small upgrade over the inform. It gives you the hype of Lamine Yamal, his first player of the month award, probably hopefully many to come as a 17 year old crazy that he's winning a player of the month right it's the hype of that also it's the potential of the future upgrades even though he's not a live card but the future upgrades through evolutions the fact that he does not have a play style plus that his stats are pretty evenly distributed across the card 88 pace and dribbling would probably be the hiccups in terms of requirements later on for evolutions but no play style plus is really huge and not that many regular play styles is really really nice for evos in the future so i think if you're doing this one you're doing it for 200,000 coins and you're getting a card who's maybe not the most meta that's what you're sacrificing by doing this sbc a little right you're getting a little bit more hype and a fun and just kind of a cool card it's his first year in Ultimate Team, his first couple weeks in Ultimate Team, and he's got this player of the month. So you're doing that and the potential for evolutions instead of getting the most meta card. And I think for this price, he's out for 27 days. I think it's one that you craft. I mean, of course, 27 days is a long time. We're going to have this week on the 10th of October, guys, those carry forward rewards from FC24, if you remember those. That's going to be a lot of fodder to either complete Lamine Yamal or the Nico Williams. So that's going to be something we have to factor into our decision to do SBCs this week and late this week as well. Now, Nico Williams, the other SBC. I mean, let's just take a step back here and look at this. This is crazy that we have both Nico Williams and Lamine Yamal. As we talked about yesterday, we were very hyped for this. Did it live up to the hype? I don't think it did. Like this one for me is a six and a half or a, probably a six and a half out of 10 SBC. Maybe for both of these, but Nico Williams is more six and a half and lower rated than Lamine Yamal for me, just because the lack of the upgrade on this card. I was hoping for an 87. He's an 86. It was very, very minimal upgrades on the shooting, on the passing, on the dribbling from what we really hoped it was going to be. But that's how it was for Alan St. Maximin. That's how it was for Diogo Jota. So are we really surprised? Not necessarily. I am a little surprised by the price though. 521,000 coins. EA knows this is a very hyped card and they know that it's live and it's got that live tax in terms of the price on it as well. And he does have a roll plus plus. He's got the five star weak foot. He's got rapid plus, which is incredibly overpowered. This card, if you're going for the most meta right now, this is your SBC that you're doing. If you care about that and that's really important to you, this is your guy because that L1 sprint boost, LB sprint boost, if you're on Xbox, uh, is very, very useful and OP with the card of his pace and with his playstyle plus and playstyle for quick step that he has. The problem is, if that gets patched within the next couple of weeks, then you're looking at a card that you spent a lot of fodder on and a lot of coin value on. It's maybe not as meta. He would still be good for sure, but not as meta as he was before. And that's kind of the downside to Nico Williams. It feels like this is his prime. Yes, he could get upgrades, but again, the upgrades for these cards, he's probably not getting upgraded at the earliest until the first week of November. That is when they could clinch the three wins and the fourth match where they could score one plus goals in, which would give him a roll plus plus and his second plus one overall. So that's, that's the earliest that he could become an 88 rated card is early November. And by that time, will there be another player of this value? 
that will be better than him that you could get via SBCs or maybe through um, an objective or an evolution that you could build? Odds are probably. So that's kind of the situation you have to think about here when deciding what player SBC to do if you want to do one. I know some people have been like, Nate, none of these player SBCs have really struck me as like must do. I think if you go for meta, it's Nico Williams. I think if you go for fun, it's Lamine Yamal. And honestly, seeing the price of these two guys, I've contemplated going back and doing the Alan St. Maximin SBC. Again, not as meta as Nico Williams, but way cheaper and still alive and maybe a fun card too. And you're not relying on the L1 speed boost to be super meta for him. He still has technical plus and he's only two squads. So six squads to the Nico Williams and 500k is a lot, but you kind of just have to make the decision for yourself based on what you value the most out of this game or the fun side of things, or more of the meta side of things, or a mixture of the both. And like I said, we do have fodder packs incoming from those rewards carrying over. We're going to have upgrade SBCs, of course, that will come out. So you'll be able to craft it. It's out for a couple of weeks. It's just going to be a bit more tough. And since it's got the higher rated squads, SBC fodder is slightly up. It definitely didn't spike yesterday. It just kind of slowly rose. Maybe a little bit of a spike here at content. As you can see, Irene Paredes was almost at 18,000 coins. And now they're back down a little bit. I know, man, a lot of people really want to invest in fodder because, oh, Nate, last year this, last year that. Fodder really has a big spike every single year. I just feel like this year we're kind of slowly rising into it instead of fodder staying low and then just going boom. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't love an all-in fodder investment at this point, but it's just because I don't think we have had crazy of enough SBCs. There's no hero or icon packs, even if it's like a max 87 hero, which I think was the earliest hero pack that we had last year that was kind of like a gamble type of hero or icon upgrade. There's been no rumors of that yet. It's probably in the code because that's the sort of packs that EA added to code from the very beginning of the game. And I think last year was mid-October when we had our first one. So I think we're getting close to a time where fodder could go up. If I'm going to invest in a high rated, I like 89s the best. I'll be completely honest. I like those the best right now. But even right now, I don't look at them and say, I think it's time to go all in for a fodder investment. I think maybe if you want to invest in some fodder, you go 83, 85s at 3K, 86s at like 5.5K on bids during rewards or during like lightning rounds or during the content drop when there's more packs opened. And then you try to get some 89s at like 20K flat. That seems pretty safe for me in terms of like a fodder investment. But it's not something that I'm like really gung-ho about because right now with the leaked SBCs that we have and the content that we currently have, it's not like I'm thinking, oh my goodness, fodder is going to explode we need to invest. So I think that time is coming. I just don't think it's here yet. Now, that's the SBC objective and evolution content. Let's look at these cards that are in packs. Of course, we have another juice team. Road to the Knockouts team too. In my humble opinion, I think it's better than team one. I don't know what you guys think. Better than team one for me just because of the players that are in this. Some of the upgrades are cracked as well. Kai Havertz, huge upgrade. Garnacho, absolutely massive upgrade here for him. Plus 10 Shooting, 11 passing, 11 physical. He was extinct at 550,000 coins. He's now down to 430K. I actually picked up two of him at 430K about an hour ago. His price has been chilling there. I think him uh, and Harry Kane both have the potential to rise today because Harry Kane yesterday made us a ton of coins. If you missed it, we made some insane flips yesterday with the market, and we're talking about more about that in the second. But if you want to see that, it's on the second channel. I'll link that above here. But it's some insane flips in the market, and we're getting those coins back fully invested, trying to make some more quick flips because of how great these cards have been moving and how many people want to try them out with the big upgrades, the live aspects of the cards, and everything else. I do feel like these cards are a bit overpriced still the pack weight isn't insane that was something that we really talked about yesterday that i wanted to see and was really curious about the pack weight's not insane for these cards guys it seems similar to team one however we have weekend league rewards which is supplying these cards a good bit more and ea did actually drop the 50k packs yesterday they didn't wait to saturday to do it and as you can see, the percentages are a little bit different. There's more of a percentage for the Europa League road to the knockouts than the Champions League. But I think the, the makeup of the team is a little different. That's interesting that there's only... Um, no, there's a couple more Europa League cards this week. Ziyech, Anderson, Zubi Mendy, Dybala, and Garnacho. So that's why that number's a little bit higher there. Not good odds. Not really a change of odds, to be honest, from team number one. So... I think these cards could have price rises in the morning today on Saturday, but then I think they will drop off Saturday night tonight into squad battle rewards tomorrow and Sunday. We're going to talk about the market a little bit more, but overall, this team I think is better. I would actually, you know what? I've got a mega pack right here. Let's rip this mega pack open. I got it from the RTTK Challenge 3. 
Didn't pack anything super insane yesterday. No walkout in this one. We're just going to go ahead and skip it. But I had to at least try, man. Had to at least try doing those SBCs. Juan Basaka, Laporte. Okay, so yeah, nothing sick there. Um, some cards for the untradeable duplicate storage that will go into SBCs. We move. Now, let's talk about the big point from yesterday, and especially with the pack code that we saw yesterday added to the code, that as we get talking about the market, worries me for market crashes on this game. Because not once have we seen it now, but twice we have seen EA use the for you packs section now the packs are no longer there for me because i've opened them and probably a lot of you guys have too but this is how the store looked yesterday at content ea brought back new for you packs including a 35,000 coin 300 fc point heroes welcome pack and the one coin pack came back we love the one coin pack no problem with that ea drop that all the time we absolutely love it but this is the second time in three days, like I mentioned, that a pack like this has come out. It's cheap enough that people feel like it's worth the gamble to open. It's kind of like EA releasing an upgrade pack SPC. That's like an 84 or an 85 rated squad, which is right around 35,000 coins, right? An 85 squad is literally like 35K, right on. That's not that expensive. We'll go ahead and do that for the chance of something good. But here it's a store pack where it's 10 rare gold players, one of which is guaranteed to be 84 or higher. I opened this pack yesterday. I profited off the pack because I packed Bremer, who was 30,000 coins, and Carval Hall. Got my first double walkout of FC25, and boom, that was the pack value back, sent to other players to the club, and I technically profited, and I opened it with coins. Tons of people are opening this pack. Every time EA is adding these four U packs, they're cheap enough in terms of coins and FC points that people are going to open them and they're tradable. So if you hit a big pull, like once again, I'm sure people were doing yesterday, you're able to sell that card. And the worst thing about it is EA's added another pack to the code that is tradable as well. That looks insane. The walk the walk pack. You're seeing this pack because you've entered ultimate team 14 days, which was literally just possible yesterday. Two weeks after the early access release this includes 10 rare golds with one guaranteed to be 86 or higher so a guaranteed walkout and i don't know how much this pack is going to be it's probably going to be more than 35,000 coins it might be 50k if it is that's a bit steep but that's really crazy and that's going to be a pack that a lot of people are going to open and again like i mentioned remember what crashed the market on wednesday of this past week it was the 25k pack that was added to this or 15k whatever it was it was that pack that was added to the store the for you pack section for tradable packs a chance at something good and the weight on those seems to be decent and uh, it's just like ea's new way to try to crash the market and with this pack code literally just impending now waiting there whenever this drops what's going to happen the market's probably going to drop because ea dropped a tradable pack in the store that a lot of people are going to go and open for the chance at packing a road to the knockout for the chance at packing a walkout because there's one that's guaranteed from this so i don't like that and it just seems like ea's new tactic to try to supply the market with cards and honestly it ends up creating market panic which I'm sure they they know that. Absolutely, they know that's going to happen. They know people are going to open that pack for sure. But I wanted to talk about it today, guys, because that's something to watch out for going forward is when we have these packs. Because we see the packs that are added in the descriptions, right? We can see that this is definitely a for you pack because it's the you're seeing this pack because you've entered ultimate team, blah, blah, blah. If this is going to happen continually throughout the year, this is going to be annoying, bro. We're going to always have to be on our toes and waiting for one of these packs to drop that could all of a sudden crash the market at a moment's notice like the pack on wednesday that crashed the market was dropped in the late night time frame luckily this one yesterday was at content so like everybody was on we were able to look at it and say okay we're gonna have supply today and the market still ended up doing really well but look at how the market reacted throughout the rest of the day yesterday with the foot champ supply and those store packs being out there was a lot of extra supply and it's making prices drop a lot so Add another variable to the whole aspect of this market that we have to kind of be worried about because EA could literally drop this walk the walk pack and you see big prices drop on this game. So we're going to keep an eye out for this, of course. So I'll always keep you guys in tune. Whenever they drop one of these in the store, um, especially if it's at a random time, I'll be tweeting about it for sure because these are packs that have potential to crash the market. And yeah, I don't love that, but it's it's the way EA are running things. So we kind of have to be ready for it. Now let's talk about the market as well, because yesterday there were great opportunities to make coins, insane opportunities. It was just like team one of Road to the Knockouts, where the market was dropping all morning. The market got low at the content time, and then people realized, oh wait, 
these new cards are not that packable. The new SBCs are decent and they're exciting, but they're not that crazy. And so people went straight back to the market, especially with weekend league demand, to go buy cards for their teams. And you saw a really big spike. I bought Sophia Smith at 230, I think it was 230,000 coins. And literally five minutes later, it sold it for 270. There were tons of fluctuations on these top tier cards. Federico Valverde was from 410K, I think. He was, he was under 400K. This was right before content. This crash was awesome. Prices were tanking. We were like, oh, this is going to be a big day to make some coins. And I wasn't expecting this big of a bounce back, but that's how a lot of the graphs look. Big panic sell in the content and then a spike right afterwards because the content yesterday wasn't that crazy. Some of the cards from like team one of Road to the Knockouts exploded. Cherokee's up 30,000 coins right now. Julian Alvarez was like 670. He's 749. Doku's up 100K, I believe. Frempong is up like 50 to 60K. Claudia Pena was 200. She's now 230. A lot of these cards are flying. A lot of the out of packs team of the week two cards are flying. And especially a lot of high tier gold cards. Now, I should say, were flying. They're not all still inflated in price. Some of them have come back down. And I think that's just because of the continual supply that we have from the weekend league rewards that are, again, bringing so much tradable and untradable supply to the market. People are going and doing SBCs. People are going and packing these players and listing them up. So I do think the market overall is getting a lot more coins into it, but it's also getting a lot more supply into it, which was what I was worried about for most of this weekend was how much supply was gonna end up hitting the market, but there's still so much demand for gameplay guys too. I don't think though that market prices are going to explode again today. What I think is gonna happen on the market again today is, I think some of these cards that went up yesterday that came back down, like look, Sophia Smith is 230,000 coins again, literally. I bought her right here, 230, sold her right here, 270, and she just kind of trickled all the way back down to 230. She's probably gonna rise back up a little bit, and some of these meta cards, even on the low tier, are gonna rise back up a little bit because when a card like, I actually, I bought a couple of Julian Alvarez for 16K because this guy yesterday, I know he was out of packs because he, he was in team one, right? But he was 38,000 coins, one of the most used strikers in the game. 38k down to 17k there's so many casual players that are going to be logging on today to play foot champs to play rivals to get on the game it's still hot fresh and new people are going to be buying these cards frim pong i know he was out of packs as well he dropped 50 percent in price doku 44 percent kante i bought one of him at 9,000 coins with a shadow i mean dude he was like how much 17k 18k yesterday before the content drop a french and golo kante center defensive mid card verts He's in packs. He's, he was in packs the whole time, right? Uh, since Rivals Rewards, he was down 38%. Sokka, down 36%. I have to believe that some of these gold cards on the lower tier, I picked up a couple of Rolfuls as well. I have to believe that some of them are going to rebound today. I do think it's a good trading opportunity for a quick flip, but I do believe that still, overall, if we look at this market index here, we're starting to climb back up as we get into the early hours today on saturday I, I think we have a little bit of a rise today but once we get to the content drop i think things drop back down again not as drastic as yesterday for sure but i do believe we have a bit of a downslope and then we look at squad battle rewards tomorrow as maybe a decent time to look at if players on the mid to top tier mid to top tier again specifically those cards that rise really well at rewards if these cards are low late tonight early tomorrow with squad battles and maybe after squad battle rewards it could be a decent opportunity to look at picking up some of these for the next couple of days again albeit watching out for this walk the walk pack that could be in a store and crash prices at a moment's notice but these are some of the times you could look to actually buy some players for your team and you might be able to hold on to some of those players for at least a couple of days and be able to not worry about their price too much. That's kind of what I'm looking for. But if we're going to do that, we got to see big drops. Again, whenever we see big drops on the market in terms of rewards or panic before rewards, what follows is usually a nice bounce back, which is why I picked up some rollfuls at like 13K because she was 20 something K yesterday. And there's a lot of Liga F hype right now with links, the Barca links as well. And then I picked up a couple of Alvarez and I think I bought one from Pong to go with my Kane and my um, Garnacho buy. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for the market. Informs are dirt cheap as well because they got supplied so much. I think these cards, same thing. Late tonight, 
and into tomorrow are probably going to be looking as investments. If you want to get a couple of those, one for the team, or at least get some cards in the club, like Cole Palmer is mad cheap. Vandevin's cheap, but he's also supplied a lot. Militao is very cheap too. This is going to be stuff to watch out for, but we do have more supply, of course, because it is weekend league rewards and a lot of those are getting paid out. Now, that's enough about the content. That's enough about the market. Let's talk about today, Saturday. What else in terms of content is going to be gracing us on this game? Well, we mentioned it already, evolutions. Hopefully, this means we can turn around the hype on Evos and actually get some more of these dropped in the game today. We'll be specifically watching to see if EA drop a nice Evo. Maybe they drop two. Maybe they catch us up a little bit. They had some other content that they were supposed to drop last week that they didn't. Really, really curious for that. There could be some leaks. Maybe not. We'll have to see. We do have a couple of leaked player species, though. The first one is another player of the month. Ajibade is Liga F, the inaugural Liga F player of the month. That is the official card design. Actually, that card design is like perfect for her hair and a dynamic image. That's kind of cool. Um, that could be coming today. If I had to guess on an SBC coming today, this would be my guess. Because if you remember, last week, we thought Alan St. Maximin was going to come on Saturday. He dropped on Sunday. And if they're going to follow the same trend, I think potentially other bro Taram SBC that is leaked could be on Sunday. This is one that I'm actually very interested in doing. His gold card is so OP. I almost thought about evolving it. I evolved Loftus Cheek instead. But I would have gotten, I guess, a promo version anyway for either of those two guys. Because Loftus Cheek has a promo. Now Taram has a promo. He's getting an SBC card. This one's going to be insane. And I know a lot of us did the Marcus Taram. So the Kefrem Taram is going to be very hype. He's insane in game, man. He's got the hair, the dreads in game, which is like, it's like a play style of its own. He's kind of like a budget hold it type of body build. If you've used him in previous um, FCs or ultimate teams, you know how he is and of course Juve for the live upgrades there so that's a really hype SBC I'm not expecting him today but I wanted to mention that because that is there um, and then yeah I really hope it's an evolution day today hope we get a player SBC and maybe EA will surprise us with something else I do expect to see a random challenge upgrade like maybe RTTK challenge 4 that could be dropping today as well and I don't know if there's any other SBCs that are refreshing uh, really to know the upgrade packs have gone away. I think gold upgrades are still better though, in my opinion. And I don't think there's any player SBCs that are expiring today either, but I don't think it's going to be that crazy of a day to be honest, but we will be watching the store. There should be some more untradeable packs. Uh, one thing I want to mention here with the packs is the 50 K packs are on a timer of two days, 13 hours. So if they change this, this could bring in a little bit more supply too, but the rest of your store packs, besides the one that are on six days, the 25 and the 45 should be refreshing today with um, more of them available. And then maybe we get a couple more of those other packs that EA added to the code, like maybe the deluxe RTTK pack or whatever. There actually was a pack that was added yesterday in the game, this nano pack. It says right here that they upgraded the pack um, odds and they upgraded the pack description to a new one. But the one that was actually showing in game was this old one from FIFA 23, a season one review pack. Was That that was when we had the out of position promo, which I completely forgot what that was in yesterday's uh, stream. But that was an old pack, so EA took that one away. I don't know if there's going to be compensation for it or not. But I think there will be a couple more store packs today. The real one that we have to watch out for, though, of course, are the 4U packs. We'll see. But, guys, let me know down in the comments what you're thinking about this RTTK uh, content. Let me know what SBC you're doing right now. Or if you're just like, nah, Nate, nothing for me is worthy of my fodder. So I'm not doing it right now. I'm kind of torn between Lamina Mall, Nico Williams, or ASM. I would like to do a live card because... Sometimes these live cards end up being really good down the line, and I just can't decide who I want to do. Nico Williams would be insane for the team. I feel like I need to try his gold card out first, maybe watch a player review before I decide to commit to a 500,000 coin player SBC. But we're going to try to make some coins. Of course, we're all in invested once again. Hopefully, I can flip this Harry Kane and these Garnachos for some profit today into Saturday. But if you enjoyed this video, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys in a video tomorrow. It's been Nathan for the Catch you guys there and in the second channel. Peace.